boy Elijah Rance coming at me with a different video. Now, if you already noticed by the thumbnail of this video, you know we're about to get into some things. But before we start, I'm letting you know right now, there will be no hate sent to anybody in this video. If you've been having paying attention on my Instagram, I've been very vocal about my recent breakup I had with my boyfriend Darius. And about now, almost two weeks ago, I posted a video, we broke up. This video was not detailed, poorly done, and an impulse emotion. I'm not deleting it because it is my real feelings, but I've not yet went back and watched it. I can't do it. <laughs> That's why I turned the comment section off. Now, all y'all probably thought I'm gonna come over here and you know just tell the situation. No, I'm gonna start from beginning to end. And this is the beginning. Okay, first and foremost, me and Darius met April of 2019. We met through social media and we was cool at first and yada, yada, yada. I didn't fall in love with Darius until July of 2019. Before that, he booked a bus to come see me and we spent a week in New York together. After that, I realized he is my soulmate and I really did love him. From July and August, I met a friend via social media. We talked, but we never took it to that level. During the beginning of our relationship, I told Darius, I said, your mouth is smart, your mouth is slick, and I like the way you talk to me. And my mouth is slick, too. But, you know, we got it. We moved on. We passed that. September of 2019, he ghosted me from September, October, November, December, the end of January, up to the first week of February, February 5th. In the course of these months, I have talked to other people, did things to other people, and communicated with other people during this time period. I'm not justifying it. I'm not making excuses for it. It was wrong on my behalf, but if someone left you for six months, you would think you're single. During this time, he told me that he was going through a struggle. I'm saying this to everybody right now. If you have a partner, a relationship, a friend, a cousin, anything you're dealing with on a 24-7 basis, if you're going through a struggle, let the person know. I'm a very understanding person. And yes, to this day, I would have known that I would have never did anything else to anybody else, period. Fact. When he came back in February, me and him both decided to get back together on a good talking terms. But he came back like nothing ever happened. And yes, after the situation, three of these people I was talking to during this time, I still remain friends with. But there was absolutely no talking on that type of level. But should I have told him what he did, what I did when he left? Absolutely, 100%. Fast forward, it's now May 2019. I just got unemployment because of COVID. Yada, yada, yada. Get my bank. Yada, yada. He was I'm not going to put his personal business out there, but he was in a struggle. And me and be the person I am, I love hard. And I deeply, that was like my best friend. I don't care what none of you have to say. What you see via social media, that is my best friend. And I will always love, I will always love him. Darius is a sweethearted person, a kind-hearted person, a lovable person. So I paid for him to drive up here, pay for the hotel, pay for the apartment, the down deposit, and first month, and June, July, August, and September. Four months flat. I bought things for us. I bought things for him. <sighs> I'm trying to, like, talking about this brings back, like, past her and memories so i'm trying to like ease my way out of it no this is very unprofessional and not like me but i have to jump in here you know i was editing the video and i saw a couple things i missed out okay boom in september before his niagara falls trip he went in my old iphone 7 plus and saw that when he disappeared for six months i was talking to the people now he thought i didn't care about his feelings i was hurt because i didn't want to hurt him haven't i known he was actually going through stuff. I would never have did that. We have to understand. At the time, I just told him my ex beforehand cheated on me for two years. Lied to me, played me, disappeared and cheated. So at that point, I feel like if you did it like he did it, you're doing the same thing. Period. And I cold heartedly, 110% on my wrong. I should not have remained friends with these people I did stuff with. 100% wrong. I apologize. Me and these people are not my friends anymore. Like... Because it was my man over everybody. So just had to chime that in there so y'all can get the full scoop. Because I don't want no backstories. Y'all gonna hear this from my mouth. And this will be the last time you hear from me. The last three months of a relationship, I noticed that he was starting to change. Since we've been up there, I was in New York. He got a new job at Walmart, new friends, which I'm perfectly fine with. I helped you so you can get you on your feet. Like anybody in a relationship should do for the other person. My issue is when you got on your feet, I was struggling and instead of you helping me you would continue to bash me 
saying how I was on employment, how I didn't have a job, but yet I had a job. That's how I got on employment. And this unemployment was paying for our bills, your bills, and everything in between. Let's not even go there. Let's let's put it out there. That's a fact. That's a fact. During these last couple weeks of our relationships, he wasn't talking to me. He was hesitant. And I'm a big hearted person. I may be a bitch sometimes. I may have a slick mouth. I may get aggressive. But I'm a reactor. You come at me, I react. And I'm not like this on a daily basis. I have to be pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. Since that time, I noticed he'd go outside in his car, smoke for four hours. He had to get out there, come back in. We were fine, lay down, chilling. Like, I don't understand. Like, I thought we was cool. We was like, we was here. That was my best friend. So, Thanksgiving comes around. I think it's interesting where y'all saw my via Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, everything. And I'm saying this right now. It is not okay to post your business on social media. It was just my only way at the time to release my stress if you are feeling depressed hurt sick or anything please contact a family member or a friend what's up guys i was editing the video and just so, so there's no confusion we was both planning to go back to, to my family's house for, for thanksgiving he told me his job wouldn't let him he would get fired so i said all right we'll stay here he told me that he was going to his friend's house no matter what so i'm like why would i stay here if you're gonna go to your friend's house that's why i went home now, I go home for Thanksgiving, November 24th, 5th, and 6th, and I was coming back up the 7th. Just giving out the timeline. When I came back home, back to Long Island on November 24th, I noticed that he was growing distant. I went on social media the next day, November 25th, and saw that he was liking every other guy's post, and I saw this board, which I've seen on my stories, let's, let's keep it real. This boy named Lewis on Instagram. And I asked him, why are you following him? Why are you liking all his pictures? Because it wasn't like your one to follow. Because I don't I don't accuse nobody. It's Instagram. Like, come on now. But it was like, as soon as I left, you both follow each other, like all each other's pictures. And then my thing is, people, when you ask somebody a question and they automatically jump off rip, get defensive, you got your answer. He jumped over, got defensive. I'm like, nah, you know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm tripping. Yada, 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 yada. Boom. This is now November 27th. I took a train back up there, took an Amtrak back to Utica, New York. And he picked me up from the train station. And I was tired from being on that train. So I got in the car. I said, hey, baby, you know. Like, first of all, I was a kid in a Christmas tree. Like, I miss my boyfriend. Cool. We went to go do laundry. And then he dropped me back at the apartment. And then we went smoking with his friends. Boom. Came back that night. I was super drained. And I was annoyed at him because I'm like, you're always out with your friends all night. You lay next to me. And I'm saying this now. If I would have known that was the last night I ever would have held him in the bed, I probably would have held him on and never let go. Back. The next day, November 28th, he gets up and he goes to his friend's house. Her name will not be said in this video. He goes to his friend's house. He's like, oh, I'm going to go decorate. He kissed me. Hey, baby. And he took the promise place that I gave him for his birthday in the Niagara Falls trip. Spoke about previously. And he leaves at 2 p.m. and doesn't come home at all. It's 12 p.m. I'm like, hey, we are you? Yada, yada, yada. No response. Not picking up my calls. And my number is blocked. So then I go on his Snapchat. And then I see a lovely picture like this. I spaz out. I started posting videos, pictures, wanting to fight people. Yada, yada, yada. Y'all would tell me if y'all saw y'all man or female with another person with heart eyes over their face, you already know the vibes. And it was the same person I thought he was cheating on me with when I was back home on Long Island. You got to trust your gut. I posted, y'all stole me on Instagram and Snapchat. I posted it everywhere going off. The next morning, November 29th, he says, I pushed it. I did too much. I went too far. 10, 11 a.m. You, hey, bro, you pushed it too far. He was just my coworker. It's nothing like that. You're shady for going to my account and posting all that stuff. Now, where were you last night? You didn't come home. I'm crying for you. You blocked my number. And then miraculously, my number's not blocking. You call me back. Come on, bro. I'm not dumb. I'm 21, but I ain't stupid. So I'm texting his friend Rena on Facebook. His friend Shannon on Snatch, uh, Facebook too. Texting everybody, like, what is going on? So I text his friend and said, he was at your house decorating. Why didn't you come home that night? She tells me... 
I don't know what's going on. I left. He left my house at 8 p.m. and said he was coming home to you. Then she further apologized and said, I don't know what's going on. And then she followed up with saying he was helping me wrap presents and that was it. And then he left, like I said, at 8 o'clock and proceeded to say he was going home to you. November 29th, after the whole me texting his friend and crying and everything and texting everybody and texting my coworkers, texting everybody saying, yo, he been cheating on me. People was like, no, he didn't. Could be his friend. I get a message on my phone. The message says, yes, me and him did flirt and me and him did X, Y, and Z, but we are just friends. Nothing more than what you did during those six months I disappeared. Well, let's get one thing straight. Since you came back around in February, I've not once talked, laid down, flirted, kissed, nothing with any other dude besides you because I actually loved you and you was my soulmate. You was the man I wanted to marry, period. I picked out your ring, period. Second, the fact that you sit here and say, oh, but he's my friend. I already know you're lying. Where was you sleeping? Saturday and Sunday. We're about to get to that in a second, too. But I took an Uber. Knowing me, I'm going to pull up to your job. Pull up to your job. I say, yo, bae, let me get your keys. Let me send the car. We got to talk to you. And he knows this. Every time he goes to work, if I'm bored at the house or if I want to talk to him, yo, bae, let me get your keys. Let me send the car. He's like, nah, he can't give me my keys. So I'm like, yo, what's up with it? So I'm chasing him around. I'm like, yo, bro, let me get your keys. Let me get your keys. He runs and gets to management and gets me kicked out of his store. So I'm sitting outside for like an hour talking to my friend who puts me on to the whole situation. And Darius comes out and says, let's go. You want to go home? Let's go. So we're sitting in the car and I ask him, who is this boy? What does he mean to you? Who is he? Tell me the truth. Just keep it. Just keep it a buck with me. Just tell me the truth. And then he was like, oh, um, we did flirt, but I did it to get it back at you. I'm a person where I, I read off body language. I look into your eyes, bro. I know when you're lying to me. I know when you're lying to me. And then he shows me the messages and the messages say, I love you. I want you. You are my baby. Yada, yada, yada. I will break up with him. I saw that. And let me tell you, I slapped the shit out of him. Because I'm like, not only did you lie straight to my face, you telling him you love him. Everybody who knows Elijah, I don't say the love word unless I mean it. And that's facts. You toss around, you love this boy, you want him, and that he's your baby. Like, you in a whole relationship, my dude. A whole relationship. You live with me, bro. Like, what are you doing? So, like, we calmed down, and we sat there, and I talked to him. I said, yo, what's wrong, babe? Like, why would you do this? Like, did you do this to get back at me because of what I did during those six months? He was like, yes. I told him, I said, listen, I want to start over. Like, I love you. I'll do anything. Like, I don't want you to go. Like, you, my bae. Now, mad people would have took that information and been about their merry way. Me, I have a big heart and I'm a forgiving person. If you really hurting about that, let me take care of you. Let me let me guide you. Like, come on now. I love this dude on my heart. And so he goes to work. Never get back home. Texted him, yo, hey, bae. You don't come back home. I'm packing. Just to see his reaction. I said, bae, I love you. I don't want you to, like, stop, da, da, da. He tells me. I'm trying to do this without crying. Like, y'all don't understand. Like, I feel like I lived through a movie, bro. That night, I'm like, yo, babe, please come home. I love you. I said, you can, like, stop. Like, bro, I would literally beg. I was begging and crying and pleading. He said, okay, but you're not innocent for talking to all those guys. One, you disappeared for six months. And when you came back, I cut all those guys off. On that type of level, I cut them off. Yeah, I talked to another guy, but only because I'm not happy. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. Okay. If you're not happy, you go and talk to your boyfriend. If you're not happy, you don't run and sit in your car and run to other niggas. What you not happy for? I brought you from being in your car to an apartment. I brought you from having no bur spent thousands of dollars for you, bro. When you have nothing. You get a job at Walmart and you think you about something you think you better than people ain't nobody better than nobody bro you put your pants one leg at a time just like me you bleed blood just like everybody around you but you had your friends your co-workers brainwashed and then you got this little bum bottom of the barrel basic ass nigga think he better than me like look at the material he can never be me and that's just facts carry on with the story so then I'm begging and pleading, crying, 
Bay, please come back, I want you. Everything in between. I went on my whole Instagram feed apologizing, begging for you. I'm ready, baby, please come home. I know you all slept in the same bed. I can't accept everything you did. I forgive you, I want you back, baby. What you're doing right now is wrong and you know you want me, baby, please. Can you take me to work? I have nowhere to go. And he said, okay. Then he lets me know. Robert driving. He says, you know you don't have to work today, right? I was like, yes, I know I don't have to work. Boom. So he takes me to his job. I'm sitting in the car. And I said, yo, I don't know which you got going on, but you got to pick me and him. You just met this dude a week ago. And you love him? That's not love, bro. You was feeling upset, and you went to any man who gave you attention. And this man knew you dated me. What's the work going out on his break? I go and get him a bear, flowers, and a card. And I went to get him his iPad he wanted for Christmas, but he doesn't know that yet. Get back in the car, I give it to him. He was like, I, I can't take it. And I looked at him and I'm like, why can't you take it? He was like, it's not right. Then I was like, can I have a kiss? He was like, no, I can't kiss you. I'm like, why? He was like, it's not right. I was like, why can't you kiss me? He kissed the boy before he came and picked me up. He read the card, I showed him my memories. He just started crying. I told him, I said, bro, you know you want me. You just fling it after the next thing. Back in the car, and my whole soul left because we didn't speak until we got to the house. I'm crying, I'm begging. He was like, I'm just not happy anymore. Da, da, da. And I told him, I said, what am I doing that's wrong? He was like, we just always fighting. I said, bro, the, the problem is, is that you hold on to a lot of past stuff and you don't let past stuff go. Like if we talk about stuff, so we're talking, and then I looked down on my phone, and he was like, I told you he was crazy. I looked up, and the side dude and his parents pull up in my crib. And he's calling Darius's phone, and his number says Loco. This dude told me Loco was his sister. He got out the car and he was talking to Lewis. So I rolled up my window. I said, Yo, bro, what you doing? What are you doing, bro? And his parents was like. Oh, let Darius let Darius decide. You know, Lewis is a good dude. I don't give a fuck what your what your son, whatever he is to you. Your son knew he was taking someone else's man. You, you that you that's what you raise. That's what you raise. And your son can never be me. That's why he didn't want to fight me outside. Straight like that. And then his parents was like, Oh yeah, we from real New York. We'll come out the car and drag you. Dude, who you dragging? You from upstate New York. You're not from New York. I'm from New York. Then the father gets out the car. I put my hoodie. I'm like, what are you about to do? He gives me a handshake talking about have no disrespect towards you. Don't do that. Because you, you figure I wasn't the one. I'm so they leave. Me and Darius are talking in the car. He stops me. He's crying. He's like, babe, I love you. I don't want you to kill yourself. It's just, I don't know what to do. I can't choose. I said, what you mean you can't choose? Bro, what? Two years over a dude you just met at your job? You can't choose? He was like, when you was treating me like an asshole, I was outside talking to him. Bro, when was I treating like an asshole? When was I treating like an asshole? When you come at me crazy, I come back at you and then you cry. I keep telling him that. I'm like, you run to your job and you make them seem like I'm this evil person when I'm not. All the stuff I did for you and now you make it seem like you're running to him because you're like, don't do that. Like, you're making me seem like a bad person. And a lot of y'all are telling me, oh, don't worry about it. You know the real. I said, I know the real, but I'm a big, I'm, I'm a person about my character and about respect. You're not going to sit here on the streets and run my name in the dirt like I'm this bad person period don't do it he hugs me and kisses me and he was like when i come back you better be alive and i'm going out and i'm going to drop my friend off home and i'm coming back to talk to you and i'm gonna give us another chance he leaves for like about an hour i go back outside he's talking to the dude on the phone bro i, I put the phone on speaker i said yo bro you cool taking someone else's man he was like Darius said he was single i said Darius said he was single and Darius was like nah like I, he knew the situation i'm looking like am i dumb am i dumb I'm like, yo, bro, but you knew he was in a, in, in a relationship. Be a man and leave that shit alone. Like, you, like, that's cool. Like, you think he's not gonna do it to you? So, that's, that happened. And then I have a scar on my arm for the rest of my life because he bit me trying to protect him for, so I couldn't get the phone to talk to him. Bit me in my arm. Arm was swollen for three days. I had to get a shot. The scar is still there. It's not gonna go away. <laughs> it's like, he packed his stuff and really left. To go and sleep at his parents' house. The favorite thing about it is when he left, he told me, if this doesn't work out, I'm always going to come back to you. I love you. This isn't our time. When wasn't our time? When I couldn't afford to keep you? Because that's when you changed, when I didn't get the unemployment checks no more. 
When was it a time, huh? When you were, when I went home, was your perfect opportunity to go talk to somebody at your job? Bro, I did everything right by you. I never played you, sidestepped you, never, none of that. When we was rocking and we lived together, I never played you. So after that, I'm depressed, crying, sitting in my room. And I'm not going to get the details of what happened. Yeah, I saw the broker video. I went home, staying at a family member's house right now. And this is when it gets. It's been two days since I've been home from being upstate. I'm getting DMs. I'm getting calls from people upstate. Darius blocks me on everything. And I'm like, you just said we was best friends. You love me no matter what. But you blocked me on everything. Then I find out that screenshots from people that he's posting this other dude talking about, you're my future husband, I want to marry you, I love you, and you're my forever. The same things you told me, but at least for me, it was substance because it's been two years. You just met this dude in a week and a half. That's your husband. Cute, cool. So then I'm sitting here crying my depression. I text all my friends, they'll text them, be like, I want my baby back. Yada, yada, yada. I get a message at 11.45 p.m. on December first hey just wanted to tell you your man's playing you i said who the f is this and it's a 315 number so it's upstate i'm not trying to be messy but he cheated on you with dudes at our job he slept with aj across the street and told us you abused him we heard you left utica and you're good we all know he talked to lewis everyone at walmart was told you beat him and your home life was horrible and i said how did you get my number Reggie at our job gave us your number, but I'm sorry, love. You didn't deserve this. I I heard you was a good dude, and don't let this boy take you out your character. Minds and dreams, we all know you love him. Keep your head up. I said, thanks. Let me address something real quick. Never in my life have I abused Darius. Never in my life made him sleep in his car, beat him in the middle of the street, or threw boiling hot water on him. You made these allegations and these lies and made me seem like I'm this villain to everyone at your job. Then I get a phone call from a 315 number stating that when you went to go pick up your friends and the timestamps is there. When you went to go pick up your friends and when you used to go out smoking, you was out getting top from different dudes and out effing different dudes unprotectively. Then, December 6th at 8 o'clock in the morning. I get a text from a lovely 315 number. Hey, so you raped Darius. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? We had sex. That was my boyfriend. Duh. Who is this? He told us in the front end, you forced him to have sex with you and you would beat him if he didn't let you. We already told us. He already told us in the manager. Plus, he left you because he was scared of you, abused you. You cheated on him. And I had to cut the cameras because I don't want to talk about this. I got emotional, but this is the rest of our text messages. I'm going to make this very clear. The type of allegation you just made on me could have had me locked away for years. Approximately almost 100 black men every day get falsely accused of rape, and about 86% of them get sent away on false claims. You try to tarnish my name and said that I beat you raped you and cheated on you let's be real when you left for those six months i was single am i proud of what i did no never once since we moved in our apartment started back talking that I talk flirt lay or do anything with anybody else and that's on me never did i rape darius molest him force him to do anything drug him or beat him because he didn't have sex with me you didn't have sex with me for weeks and this is the proof, because you out here having sex with other people. You and this boy have made posts talking about I'm a bozo, I'm changing my number, and that you went taking him to dates on our favorite restaurant, wearing the same exact clothes I took you when you when we went. Got a Christmas tree up in his room with the same exact tree and star we planned for our apartment. Now, I'm not crazy. Y'all not crazy. You putting the dots together. He can never be me. You ran from the situation. You blocked me from texting you. You blocked me from calling you. You blocked my friends from texting you. I've never got a real sincere apology. Oh, and he said, Dante, I'm sorry. Dante is a nickname he gave me because it is my little name. And that's why I know he's being sincere. He said, Dante, I'm sorry. I never should have did it. It should never went down like that. First of all, it should never happen. Let me continue. We was talking on the phone for an hour. I thought we was good. 
He texts me on our couples page saying, I'm sorry, everything I put you through. He said, I just left the apartment. I'm sorry. I cried. You didn't deserve that. And I told him, I forgive you. It's just, I hate that you did me. And I said, day. And I said, sorry for calling you that. He said, it's okay. Later that night, I posted on our couples page a video of us in the bed. He proceeded to post a video after the fact, after the video I posted on our couples page, his new buddy, after me on the page, and proceeded to text my friend saying, Let me explain something to you. For four months, I was holding down this and you. When I was struggling, you don't tear someone down because they're struggling. That's what you did. Bro, when I was with you, people was under our post calling us goals, fave couple, y'all look so happy. And the whole time you're playing me behind my back. And then now under my Instagram, I see comments like this calling me a child. You said and stated, I've never said that. If that is true, you should have went online and said it was a lie. You can't do that. Karma is real, okay? And that boy, he will never be me, period. And speaking of the boy, mad people in Utica said that boy is messy. A hoe. Got something. And known for taking people's men and being petty. Let me tell you something right now, Lewis. You don't fear me. You don't put fear in my blood. You run around telling your friend. Oh, by the way, Lewis always comes in the break room and brags how he took your man from you and that he would never give him back to you. First of all, he was never my man if he could be taken so easily. Lewis, you're a coward. And into the story, you texted my friends, I did nothing for you. And you told me I'm a piece of shit and fuck me because I told them that I helped you when you was homeless. Darius... You sat there and said I did nothing for you, and I'm broke. Money can't buy you happiness. You broke my heart. You shattered it in a million pieces. I couldn't sleep for nights. I couldn't eat for nights. And all his friends calling me who work at Walmart and on his page comments and talking about, oh, him and his new boyfriend is cute. Stop I love my heart for you. I wish nothing for you but the best. Maybe in the future, if life doesn't happen, I would take you back. I just want you to really mature and grow up and realize you can't keep doing this to people. Because all your exes told me this is what you do. And you told me, bro, to move on. You can't move on from a plan you had set in stone to marry you. Just the day before I found out you cheated, you said we're going to do a Christmas tree and get married. And you just going to do that? Oh, and yeah. I did log into your Snapchat, and I did get all the receipts that I need. You, and you have your Snapchat back now. And I begged you for days, and you told me you're not going to get me back acting like this. So this is a game to you? Don't worry, bro. I have people who want my attention. I have people who will treat me better than you did. But the sad part is I can still sit here on this phone and say I really still love you. That boy you with now, he ain't going to love you. I know everything about him. I know more about him than you do. I let this boy slander my name for almost two weeks, and this is my last time talking about this. You text me my phone about the situation, you comment on my Instagram about the situation, you DM me anything about the situation, and all his friends watching this, you will be blocked. Also, I wanted to say if you're ever depressed or ever suicidal, please contact 1 800 237 8255 or go to www.suicidalawareness.com. They're open 24 hours. If you're ever depressed, please phone a friend, a family member. And I'm asking everybody, just tell someone, are you okay? Just ask someone, are you okay? How's your day going? That could really affect that person's day or the decision they will make.
And if you are depressed, please go to www.depression.org. They have different free services to talk to people. Link the descriptions down below. And I'm saying this right now. If you ever want to talk to me or vent to me or cry with me, my Instagram is I am the official Eli. My Snapchat is at Real G Boss. And my TikTok and my Twitter is both Eli Durant's with an extra E after the rent. <sighs> this is my last time talking about this. I'm saying this now. Don't send no hate to him or his new whatever. You have to lay your head at night, you know, what you did to me and how you tarnished my name. And I'm a good dude. Everyone knows I'm a good dude. You made me feel ugly and worthless. And it's sad because you were the same person that made me feel powerful and cute and just creative. And you took that from me. But it's okay. I'm going to get it back. This is the end of my video. Like, comment, subscribe. And next week, I will be posting my fight reactions to my high school fights. So, bye, guys. It's been real. Catch you on the next one.